for, for no reason. Turned them away. Jakarna came here and wanted to look at how perhaps we could have something worked out. Understanding the knowledge that the Maroons reserve when it comes to ganja. Medicine from our forests. Again, that was turned upside his head by one said Basra, who is one of main topic today. Just recently, great philanthropist came, made an offer to help us with a water project. He sent a young project coordinator here to assist us getting this up and going. And again, thwarted by the efforts and energies of others who say they have maroons at heart, interest at heart. They don't live here. They're not from here. Many of the interference that we face today is overseas based, but they have puppets that they feed. But the good is greater than the bad. I reaffirm that in the name of the Most High to you tonight. I declare our land is a land of peace and prosperity and happiness and fulfillment for those who have remained and still choose to remain amidst all the adversities, amidst all the challenges, amidst all the negativity, amidst all the fight. We survive. We are Maroons. I pray that good sense prevails because the Maroons are calling for justice. Mr. Williams planned to storm the community and create a very strenuous situation on my administration with men carrying guns to reclaim what he says is his building. I am saying, are the authorities going to sit and let people from the outside come in here and murder more Maroons to blame it on the chief? Before you act. I say, oh. Salam alaikum, alaikum salam. I have an elder here with me tonight. His name is Mark Wright. Mark has been around for quite some time and is a strong culture bearer of this community. Mark has been involved with a lot of administrations and has met a lot of players, many of whom I would have just mentioned to you. Mark will be bringing a little bit of information to you to help substantiate what I've been saying all this time. But before I bring Mark in, I want to touch, or let me say conclude, on a bit of an issue we, we spoke of earlier as it relates to someone being injured here in a compound. The incident with Dean, I need to fully deal with that once and for all and move past it. Because Dean would have been warned, as I would have mentioned on more than one occasion, for his outbursts, his libel, his slander, and then his conspiracy with former Colonel Williams, Dennis Foster, Lorna Anderson, Duncan Buchanan, Affiliates of their compound news network, which I won't mention anymore. Not an official entity of this body or this council or this state. These people were on a phone call this week conspiring ways and means of overthrowing this administration. You heard me. Oh, I forgot the one Dave Reed, who's also a man appearing out of nowhere. Being a concerned maroon, Interview painted himself you. right as a direct liaison and contact with the backside company. Came in here, said he's a maroon and wants development. Started an entity without the knowledge of the council or myself. Registered it overseas, a foundation 501c3. Had a website, Jamaica Maroon Indigenous Society, I believe it was. I posted it on my page. You can go there and look. People might not understand where did that come from? Why, what was that post about, Chief? 
This guy came here saying he wanted to unify the Maroons because the situation that the government is dealing with is wrong and the company doesn't like that. They want to talk to us because there's money that wants to come in here. He's a sweet talker. If you hear that interview that he was on, listen to him. He sounds like a scammer. Pay good attention, people. Pay good attention. Be diligent. This guy is begging people to come forward with information about we holding him against his will. Mr. Reed came here for a dinner. We escorted him to Kinda, the most sacred place in our community, for a meeting. We were over there for two and a half hours in our hut, pouring rain. We have it on the video. We have it in recording. Mr. Reed, you have issued slanderous remarks, libelous claims against myself and members of my administration. These guys went out, people. Listen to me good. I will share it. These guys went out and drafted warning po uh, wanted posters with myself and members of my administration putting $6 million bounty on our heads. This was being circulated in my community and to media houses. They had stamps with FBI and State, De State Department on there. Now, if the State Department and the FBI wanted the chief, do you think I would have been in such contact with the officers of the law in the last week, maybe four or five times we've been here? Prior to that, would I be talking to the former Prime Minister Bruce Golden? Former to that, would I be in, the, in, in discussion? With, listen, people, I don't think you understand what is really going on here, you know. People have been trying to subvert our authority by getting my signature, taking pictures with me, and going off and saying, oh, the chief gave them authority to do such and such. They want to go and make deals with companies and in overseas entities under the name of the full council. This guy posted our constitution on his page. Wrote a very elaborate charter on how he wanted to do cryptocurrency and development in our state. Focus on building a hospital. Mr. Reed, what about water? Where are you going with a hospital without water? Listen, we are not idiots. As my old football coach used to say, my head normally makes me comb. People. People. I beg of you. This is not a joke. This is no longer a joke. Me being here tonight is putting my life on the line to let you know what is happening truly in a compound town. Truly with cockpit country. All these players are connected and entangled. Yes, sir, we do. When Basra and when Mr. Dennis Foster, his financier, right? Former drug dealer. And let me tell you something. We believe in reform. Don't think I'm bashing Mr. Foster because of his conviction. Right? We believe in reform and we are Maroons. We look out for each other. And we still look to people and what good they have and they can contribute to the upward mobility of a people. But Mr. Foster came with the rest. He came, he came holding us ransom for what we thought was the authentic treaty. He then went on trying to blackmail us into putting him into our council. He wanted to be my deputy chief. Mr. Basra wanted to be secretary of state. And you can't even talk to people good. You don't have respect for authority. There's a video out there with you labeling the prime minister with a whole rock stone of bad words. As bad as things are, brother, when it comes to diplomacy, one has to carry themselves circumspect. You do not, I'm sorry, epitomize the true Maroons because Maroons would offer themselves in servitude to their brothers and be their brothers' keepers. Not be joining with external forces in creating propaganda and slander at such a critical moment in time where for 284 years, the Maroons have finally stepped up to assert their true position on this land. We've had to sue to protect this land. And now we have to do it again. Stand up firm. Where were all these people all this time? Were they just going to sit and watch cockpit country fade away? Were they just going to sit and watch our rights just fade away? Can't. That's not, that's not what this is about. 
It is bigger than that. It is bigger than that. Mr. Basra was given 24 hours to, left the, to leave the community. The police was here when he was issued that order. The superintendent of Black River received it as well as the, super, the uh, sergeant who visited here that night. I explained to them the procedure that would be carried out as per the Maroon Constitution. We met as a council. We met as a community and we drafted such orders for Mr. Basra to vacate. The officers came here and asked for an additional 24 hours for him to vacate. We obliged. That night, numerous, numerous threats came in to a compound that night to myself and to members and figures of my community and my council. Naturally, the community became irate because now we're now being put in another state of threat and alert. So that morning, I understand that men went to escort Mr. Buzzer from the community. He slightly opened the door. They creased open that door. He realized what it was them and ran. He ran and jumped off a terrace and dislocated his arm. No one harmed him. No one touched him. We have him on record saying that he fell and dislocated his arm. So cut all the bull about people hurting, breaking his arm, beating him up. That's not what this is about. This is about maintaining order and removing disruptive influences from our community, which is the root and source for contention, not only for myself and the council, but there are other reports in this community about said individual you are not privy to. People have lost money. People are looking for this man, for his claims. There is no cannabis cancer research center in a compound. People, people come to a compound and you will seek and receive your truth. That is that. As it relates to Basra, the law was involved. They're fully aware of what took place. And all that was done was done within the laws of the Constitution of the Maroons. The gate issue. Because we now understand that the gate was taken down. Because people have made complaints that the people of a compound are trying to enter their community and can't get in. Now this is ridiculous because this gate has never ever been closed. What we do and what we have been doing is actually placing people at the gates to our community. I see comments of people asking, so why gate led in any way? Many of you live in your gated communities in the comfort and security of your homes. This is a private community. We are entitled to secure and preserve our community. The last three murders that occurred here occurred because of persons coming from the outside. Under Colonel's regime. Under the previous Colonel's regime. This was one of the things the people cried for. Chief, we need security because we can't take one next one. Come from outside and kill one of ours. And men of this community, under the influence of former Colonel Williams, went and took down the gate to the entrance of our community. I want to take this opportunity to reach out to the good folks, to ask your kind assistance in helping us, replacing this gate, and perhaps with a more sturdy one. So this time, they'll have to use a bulldozer to take it down. The fact is, we are approximately 30 to 35 minutes from the closest law enforcement office. We have to have mechanisms and tools in place to protect our people. By the grace of the Almighty, we have been able to stave off any form of attack, any form of oppression, any form of crime and violence within our communities. 
I strive to do nothing but the same and even better. Don't deprive us of this liberty. You have no say in what happens here in a compound. For the people have spoken. And when the people have spoken, I am obliged to act. So let's make that clear. Chief Curry is not a provocateur. The provocateurs are being sent here to upset the unity of this community, Indeed. to upset the great peace in this community, to upset the already suffering and dying of this community. Be real. Sondi Abi. I pray the blessings and guidance over you, all the followers, and the persons who remain above board and taking the time out to absorb information before going off and making your own judgments. Everyone is entitled to an opinion, but I would suggest you gather as much information and facts as you do before making a determination on what angle to go. I hope the police officers out there will recognize that what we fight for is not what we've just conjured what we've just conjured up what we're fighting for is what existed here over 284 years ago what we're fighting for is to survive with dignity is to survive without these evil oppressive of oppressive forces constantly preventing myself and my good administration from delivering relief to the people who truly need it. Justice will come one day and it will come one way. Peace of a real. No. Mr. McPherson would have confirmed many fears we have that exists today. But I want to reaffirm the good people of cockpit country, the good people of Jamaica and the good people of the world, that goodness will always overcome. And no weapon formed against I shall prosper. And I know you will not sit back and watch this injustice continue to divide and pervade our society. Mr. Mark. Yes, Chief. Please let me know if you're able to hear Mark. Mark, good night. Good night, Chief. I want Mark to explain to you how he came about interactions with the previous administration, Mr. McPherson, Mr. David, Mr. David Holmes, Holmes, Dave Sir. Reed, all the fellows who are all a part of this pact to destabilize and overthrow the will of the good people. Mark, Please. Me? How did you meet David Holmes, Mr. Holmes, David Holmes? David Holmes was the former Secretary of State and the former Colonel Ferran Williams. I I meet Mr. David Holmes as 
through a friend of mine named Fanam and he told me that David Holmes have interest in the community. Where's and David Holmes from? David Holmes is original from Canada, from British Columbia. British Columbia, Canada. David and, Holmes, okay. And then I introduced Mr. Williams to Mr. David Holmes the day on the phone. Mr. Williams told me, I will never leave Hanover and come to a company if I'm not getting my fear to buy my gas. I said, don't worry, you will get your pay. I introduced Mr. Dennis Foster to Mr. David Holmes also. We meet on Mr. Dennis Foster building and Mr. Fern Williams, myself, Mr. Dennis Foster and Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams signed him as a Secretary of State for a company, Maroon Village. I have the documents all now, so it's not online. After so, he signed, Mr. David Holmes, and when the people of the community get boisterous, he, what he did, Mr. Ferron Williams, had, then the Colonel, called the police on me. What, but Mr. David Holmes was so skilled. What he did, he served as notice on the Governor General. I am the contact. So when he served the notice, I get a second letter from the Governor General called Mr. David Holmes, went back to Canada, but I have the contact letter. Mr. Fern Williams bring the police to me. I tell the police, them, give me five minutes, I'll go find my letter. When I go find my letter and they read it, they say, Mr. Williams, this man have all authority and all power. He's like a waste man. And he have to, the, him and the police have to leave because he wanted to charge me, but he could never charge me. So what what is what he's explaining is Mr. Holmes was appointed Secretary of State, State. under the prior administration, mm -hmm. and Mr. Holmes resides in Canada, in right? Yes. And I I understand that the relationship was one that Mr. Holmes had ways and means and mechanisms of working through the United Nations mm -hmm. to acquire certain privileges and rights yes. for the Maroon people, yeah. right? I'm sure he may have started with pure intentions. Right, I don't know him. I've spoken to him a few times in our initial engagements with Mr. Foster and the others who are around in creating this Akompong News Network. This is how these guys have remained present in Maroon politics from previous administration to current. Now, they did not get to finish their uh, plans under Colonel Ferron Williams because David Holmes, De Duncan Buchanan and Dennis Foster, as well as Dane Basra, were all sidelined when Mr. Timothy McPherson came into the picture. It got so bad, they launched an attack <clears throat> on Ferron Williams at that time. Ferron Williams then reached out to his police colleagues and his overseas connections and had Dennis Foster arrested. Dennis Foster was serving time because he was then under watch for what was trafficking and possession distributing. and distributing of cocaine. So Williams was the one who Foster had um, communicated, was the one who uh, put him in jail Sell him and out. put all the other ones who were uh, affiliated with him um, in trouble with law enforcement um, in the United States because Duncan Buchanan is in Connecticut. Watch this, you know, people. All these people don't live here. Duncan Buchanan is a bus driver in Connecticut. And... Um, uh, David Holmes is in British Columbia and Dennis Foster is, I'm sorry, he's in New York. Duncan Buchanan is in New York and Dennis, I believe, is in Connecticut. Connecticut. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All of them, right, are overseas except one, which is Daniel Basra, who's staying at the hotel. So I want for you to understand how these persons are now connecting, having said this was the man who imprisoned him. But I am the same man who introduced Duncan Buchanan because... To the PNP and the JLP politics, Duncan Buchanan was Danny Buck's son, and we need somebody to run against J.C. Hutchinson. That's why we introduce him here, but he see more spoils and fish in the Maroon thing. That's why I leave the PNP politics and want to join with Mr. Dennis Foster. So, anyhow, moving on, right? The politics is deeper than you probably think. And you're wondering, what is me I listen to? What am I listening to? What am I really hearing? Is this real? Okay. Well, listen. The fact of the matter is, when Timothy McPherson came in, he replaced the idea and the concept. He became the new man. 
to what David Holmes represented and that caused a significant fallout. Now sidelined, they all remained in the background fighting their war, trying to oust Ferran, trying to do all sorts of things to expose him. That is how we eventually came by some of the information we found out about the Lumi. We got this information from Dennis Foster, from Duncan Buchanan and from David Holmes. This was them trying to offer us information showing to us how involved they were and how powerful they supposedly they were in the connections they would have made with the governor general, the prime minister, all these things. But this didn't happen because then they were sidelined, right? They were sidelined by Mr. Williams. And because of that, Mr. McPherson then, then took the place of what was then the mastermind, um, Mr. David Holmes. That is where now the story starts to ripen because Mr. McPherson came with a more elaborate plan, a more intricate plan. And also, when I, when I introduced all these men to Colonel Ferran Williams at that time, Ferran Williams said, oh, that's the white elephant. But when he get the spoils and spill, then that's when he gravitate into it. And then he leave the community on the back. So, my thing is this. Once the Lumi thing came up, the Council of Overseas Maroons at the time, members of the community wrote several letters asking them to declaration, for declarations on what the proposed banking uh, arrangement was going to be. There were no answers. None of the questions that were posed were ever answered. I have copies of those letters, right? And I'm going to point you to where you can find all this information that I'm talking about because rest assured, as I said, this is full disclosure and I'm going to be making it available to every single one. I want the world to see this. My information is of no use to local authorities. My information is of no use to those who are here to uphold the law for you. Consider that. So, when Mr. McPherson took over, there are several questions that remain unanswered. The, the main one was that the building, as it was being built and being financed, how was it being financed? Who was the financier? Whose building is this? There's a groundbreaking ceremony, people. Community was there. Justice of the Peace was there. Minister, Minister of the Church was there. Peace. It's all there. How can this man come now saying that this building is his? You heard it on the, the, the clippings which I've posted. It is causing a problem in the community because his loyalists are hell-bent on creating problems moving forward. So I'm bringing this into your purview. I'm bringing this to light. I'm bringing this so you see what is really happening here. The affiliations go deep. The emails that we found implicates other entities here involved in what was going on in the background discussions and you would have found notices issued by the BOJ as it relates to the operations of Lumi on this land. Then how would certain people be having these discussions regarding Lumi with these players which I'm discussing? What happened to the three billion dollars that's been missing out of Germany with the Wirecard scandal. What about this entity, Caribbean Development Group in St. Lucia, that is sending all this money to our account? Who is that? Eco Six. Who is that? Who is, the, who is the Caribbean Development Group? Who is John Wendell Skeen? I mean, who, who are these people? Six. 
Mr. McPherson asserts that the company in St. Lucia handles several other projects and other initiatives. So there would be nothing specific on the Lumi to be found there. Oh, but I found 900 and odd thousand US dollars that came from there. Why are we here in your mess? Why are we here having to suffer through your mess? Cleaning house is harder than I thought. Because corruption is rampant. It is rampant. And until you choose to hold those accountable people, your demise is only above the horizon. The world's most wanted man landed in a compound on a private helicopter and left without the knowledge of the wider state. Or so I hope. Or maybe not. I don't know. He traveled in a private vehicle. Never know a helicopter chief. He landed here. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. RNG, read me that group. I'd like to take this opportunity to say to Mr. Reed, Mr. Dave Reed. You are not welcomed in a compound. You are not a maroon. You do not mean us any good. Your deceptive and divisive ways have been identified and have been found out. You cannot bribe the maroon people into fabricating your story. We have videos and we have audio. Send who you need to send. Send them come. Because you, Mr. Reed, will be facing a libel and slander claim yourself. Mm -hmm. Those who are out there taking on all these political angles, save yourself. Giving ear time without first understanding what lies at feet. Check yourself. We're doing the work of the people here. And if it doesn't interest you, feel free to unfollow me. Feel free to tune me out. Feel free to turn a blind eye. Because it never concerned you in the first place. It shouldn't concern you now. About 284 years. Those who try to devise strategies to subvert the authority of the state are considered as enemies of the state. Persons from within who try to subvert, try to create tyranny, disruption, and turn away the good that wants to come here, the good that wants to help. You are no short of traitors to your own people to your own culture when you turn people away you're turning them away from your kids as well because you live here and you want what's best for them so if it is that you want what's best for them how is it in your eyes do you see this working out in their favor how is it in your eyes do you think they will be treated out there when they say they are maroons you think it's because of chief? All of you are saying, oh, chief come cause problem with the government, chief come this, chief come that. None of you were ever politically or social aware enough to recognize what was happening here under your noses. You were going to sit here and allow our great land to be taken and given away to foreigners you are gonna sit here and watch jamaica become republic without understanding its implication on this prior agreement that they've yet to honor and you say you are a maroon and you say you're here for justice and rights 
and you say you're here to stand up for your forefathers. You're here. You say you're here for a culture. Give it up, man. What not jump for six of January? A charade? It's not a charade. It's a pilgrimage honoring. It's a pilgrimage honoring what our forefathers fought for and left for their posterity forever. Forever. Never. Treaties never die. Salam alaikum. Let's get to talking. Let's get to fixing this thing. I don't like doing this. I don't. I really don't. It is heartbreaking to be having to do this. When the police came here the other night, they came here on behalf of threats issued to other persons in this community because of persons they say affiliated to me have threatened them over the incident of the gate. Not one has asked anything about the threats I've received or members of my administration have received. No, they did not come about the gate that was ripped off the wall. No, they did not come about that. They told me not come about that. Didn't come about that. Never want to come, never come about that. And then, not satisfied with what they got when they came. Upon leaving, one of them would have issued a threat to the young man and young men of a compound. Telling them, don't ever come to Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz is a little district out in St. Elizabeth. Right? Don't let us see you in Santa Cruz. Because it's different things. Yeah? Why is it so difficult, Jamaica? Why is it so difficult? Chief Curry is using the law and using the tools of the law, instruments of the law, to protect the integrity of his administration and the state and its people. Chief Curry is only conveying what his ancestors left here that has been misunderstood and mis misinterpreted and propagated in propaganda machines for so long. Chief Curry is on a mission of educator, education, educating his people and uplifting them spiritually and mentally but love is hard to come by in the town because of so much division and entities and forces working against it none of them reside here none of them are in here those that are in here are being influenced by them they're being financed by them they're being placed by them chief curry left to come and try to fix things chief curry with his administration have begun the process of fixing things Chief Curry is not a don. Chief Curry is not a criminal. It's a leader. He's Chief Curry man. didn't even consider himself a leader. Chief Curry did come here just because he didn't think he could have do better. Because he said certain things where he could have tried to plug in. He have certain resources in people where he know. And he have certain experience out there in business in the business world. And he come to apply that. Chief Curry let go everything where he did have. When he think was possession. They weren't really possession. My possessions are all over. My friends will still have things in them house. So I you know, feel away sometimes. The material don't matter for me. The material is always the material. They come and they go. The divinity of purpose and mission in life is what stands out for me. My mission and my purpose is to elevate and uplift the Maroon people out of their deplorable state. Oh, up, up, you mighty race. Mighty Never bow down to the tactics and maneuvers of the oppressors. Rest assured, the voice within 
is the guidance within. I hate to have to do this. I hate to have to do this. People say, oh, you must practice a little bit more diplomacy. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What more can I do within the powers that I have? Members of the opposition have been calling me and giving me their support, more than members of the current administration. Floyd Green is a classmate, former classmate of mine. He used to go to Monroe College, sits in the office of the Prime Minister. What happened, Floyd? What's going on, Floyd? You're a Monroe brother. Floyd, what's going on? I thank you for standing with us. I thank you for continuing to support our mission. We might be shaken, but we are not moved. For every hill there is a valley. After every valley there is a hill. I am saying tonight to the well-thinking minds and the good people of Jamaica, the good people of the wider world. Last month, we had a representative at the United Nations to bring to the fore our plight. They received us well. They were so excited to see us. We left all our speech. They took all of them and placed them on file. We've made several contacts since then, several friends since then many whose eyes are now keen on what's happening here in jamaica the fact is jamaica is a signatory to the declaration on the rights of indigenous people they've not ratified which is why the indigenous people in the land still try to still are suffering we can't find home we are lost we can't find home because we're still under a system that is keen on depriving us of our dignity. We're keen on bringing to an end this nonsense I am asking the authorities, MOCA, the Jamaica Constabulary Force, the Jamaica Defense Force, the Minister of National Security, the Office of the Public Prosecutor, the Office of the Political Ombudsman, the Office of the Prime Minister, the Office of the Governor General, I'm pleading to you as head of state elect, as the successor to Captain Kojo, Chief Richard Corey of the Trelawney Town Maroons of Cockpit Country, do seek your assistance in bringing to end long-standing issues pending with the government of Jamaica, a colony of the Crown, heir to the responsibilities and duties and obligations of said crown. The Maroons are seeking your help. I thank you for joining me tonight and I hope that in the coming days we can have constructive and productive dialogue. Peace be upon to you. Ashe. 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 Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. And we talk again. Please stay tuned.